I should be talking about the Pendrent and Pendrent syndrome. And what is the Pendrent syndrome? The Pendrent syndrome is basically a syndrome that is related to the thyroid gland, all right? So the Pendrent syndrome has to do with uh, your thyroid gland not functioning well due to something, all right? That is what we are here to actually talk about, all right? So what is our focus for this video? To discuss the Pendrent syndrome. Right, so looking at this, this is a Pendrex syndrome. I could see that at the Pendrex syndrome, there's also an enlargement of the thyroid gland, okay? So I, I've told you guys many times that enlargement of the thyroid gland doesn't necessarily mean hyperthyroidism. Uh, any a disease condition of the thyroid gland always um, shows up as what? An enlarged thyroid gland, okay? So in Pendrex syndrome 2, we have an enlarged um, thyroid gland. So guys, deficiency of pendrine leads towards <coughs> Pendrex syndrome. And Pendrex syndrome, you know that a syndrome is like an umbrella that actually has other disease condition in it, okay? So deficiency of pendrine leads to Pendrex syndrome. And um, Pendrex syndrome is basically two disease condition that will be under here. Delta, that will be what? swelling of the thyroid gland then we have deafness all right so pendrex syndrome we said that it is a deficiency of pendrine and looking at this this is a comprehensive pathway that actually leads to the production of what thyroid hormone now you can see that pendrine this pendrine is basically a, a stuff that um, oversees what the trapping of iodine okay from the apex of the cell to inside the cell okay this one is iodine coming through the basal membrane all right but iodine also comes through the apex all right so pendrine will actually oversee this action so pendrex syndrome also known as pendrex syndrome is a genetic disorder that affects children now let's break it down for you the hearing loss how does it uh come about Hearing loss is that children with Pendrex syndrome typically experience early hearing loss, which may begin at birth or by the age of three. Okay, so now the hearing loss tends to worsen over time, and some individuals may eventually become totally deaf. All right, so almost all children with Pendrex syndrome have hearing loss in both ears, that's bilateral hearing loss, although one ear may be more affected than the other one. All right. So I've already explained this uh, picture where I told you guys that Pendrex syndrome is basically uh, the inactivation of this complex that actually oversee the trapping of iodine from the apex of the cell into the cell, okay? So that all those conjugation or garnification process can occur so that thyroid hormone is formed, okay? So this is Pendrex syndrome. Typically, there's gauta and there's what hearing loss too. So thyroid involvement. We said that Pendrex syndrome may impact the thyroid gland because the thyroid gland is meant to produce a thyroid hormone. So if it is not producing the thyroid hormone, then the thyroid gland is not doing well. Do you understand? So it may also impact the thyroid gland. Now the thyroid gland located in front of the neck plays a crucial role in energy metabolism. Basically, the thyroid hormone is what plays the role in energy metabolism, all right? So people with Pedret syndrome are more likely to develop an enlarged thyroid. That's a garter. However, not everyone with Pendrex syndrome develops a garter, right? So the typical age for garter development is during adolescence or early adulthood, okay? So if the thyroid, if the garter that's like the enlarged thyroid gland becomes too large, it may cause problems with breathing and swallowing. Of course, you know that the trachea is passing behind the thyroid gland and the esophagus is also passing behind the thyroid gland so interestingly despite thyroid involvement most children with Pendrex syndrome still grow and develop normally all right so this is it i just brought this image so you could illustrate the hearing loss all right so that you guys will actually see have um, a reminder of how the anatomy of the inner ear looks like so balancing issue Anything affecting the air is affecting the vestibulocochlear nerve. And the vestibulocochlear nerve has like um, 
two components that's the vestibule component and the cochlear component okay the vestibule component is for what balance cochlear component is for hearing right so it can affect only the cochlear component you anything happening to the vestibule cochlear nerve will affect the two components of it okay so balancing issue we said that Penjoy's syndrome can affect the vestibular system which controls balance now some individuals with Penjoy's syndrome may show vestibular weaknesses during balance test all right now what are the genetic basis we said that Penjoy's syndrome is primarily caused by genetic factors researchers estimate that 50 to 60 percent of cases in the United States result from genetic causes why the remaining cases are due to what environmental factors treatment unfortunately there's no specific cure for pedra syndrome uh, treatment focuses on what supportive measures for hearing and loss if necessary thyroid hormone supplements in case of hypothyroidism of course it will result in hypothyroidism because this must be here for sufficient iodine to be moved into the cell for thyroid hormone to be produced so if the pendrin is so deficient then definitely uh, you have problems of thyroid hormone not produced in sufficient amount you understand all right so guys that's it about the pendrin syndrome uh, basically the definition the causes all right the diagnosis and the treatment okay so bye for now